Running in its purest form is simple. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other until you hit a target, finish a race, or just get bored. But in recent years, the goalposts have shifted, and for many runners, the best way to get those marginal gains is by using running gadgets. Today, Anna and I are gonna be taking a look at all of the technology that says it can help you to improve your running by measuring all sorts of different running dynamics. Whether you're totally new to running or you've been clocking up the miles for years, we guarantee there is something for everyone in this video. So make sure you keep watching and drop us a like down below. Even better, subscribe to The Running Channel and tap the bell icon so you get notified when we upload new videos all about running and you can be kept up to date on all the latest gear, gels, gains, all the Gs. Let's check out these gadgets. First, let's talk about running dynamics and what that actually means and what each of the individual metrics is talking about. Now, the term gait analysis is actually often used as an umbrella term to cover everything to do with the sort of things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at a few of them in a little bit more detail now in case you might never have heard of them. So we're going to explain what they are and why they might be important to you. Cadence is the number of steps that you take per minute or SPM. So for most runners, it will sit somewhere around 150 to 200 SPM. For the elites, they're more likely to be pushing 180 and above. Now, your cadence can be affected by a number of things. For example, your stride length, your height and the terrain that you're running on. Stride length is the distance along the ground between successive foot contacts. Now you might see runners increase their cadence as they try to shift towards a sprint at the end of a longer race, but that might also result in a change to your stride length. Stride length is important because ultimately it can help you to avoid injury. You might think that forcing yourself to have a longer stride length will make you run faster and further, but if you overreach and make contact with the ground in front of you, then that can result in injuries in itself, so you have to be careful. Foot strike and pronation considers whether your foot comes into contact with the ground evenly. So for pronation, some runners may pronate, which means to roll inwards, or to supinate, which means rolling outwards. A level of pronation is absolutely fine, but anything excessive may cause some issues. Foot strike, on the other hand, is about which part of your foot touches the ground first and then in which order the rest of your foot follows. There are also even more technical elements, not all of which are measured by all the devices on test today, but do show you just how complex and advanced some running consumer technology can be. Things like hip angle, air time, toe off angle, power, body bounce, leg stiffness, and impact acceleration can all be measured and assessed to see just how efficient your running form is. Now, if you've got any questions about any of the stuff that we've just covered, then please do drop them in the comments below. We know that there is a lot of information to take in, but hopefully a simpler question is, how do all these metrics make a difference to your running? The simplest answer is that these products claim to be able to help you to maximize your performance whilst reducing the risk of injury. That might be through helping you to identify imbalances that can ultimately lead to injury or to make quick adaptations that could help you to lead to better performance. They also claim, some of them that is, to be able to help you to choose the right pair of shoes. Now there's no quick fix, but the idea here is that these things might be able to give you some extra guidance to help with your running. We've broken the tech down into three main categories based on where on your body they go. So there's on your feet, around your waist, and anywhere else. And we're going to be assessing each of the gadgets using four main criteria, price, ease of use, what it measures and usefulness. Now, as ever with our gear roundups here on The Running Channel, we haven't been paid by the brands to say nice things about their products. So you can guarantee that everything you're about to see are mine and Andy's genuine opinions. First up is MIMO, which is a small sensor that sits inside a little sock that you wear on your ankle. Now, this means that this is one of the few devices that we're looking at where you actually are encouraged to run barefoot in order to go through the testing. And what the device aims to do is show you your foot strike type, so whether that's forefoot, midfoot, or rear foot, as well as the degree of pronation, which are mainly the things that specialty running stores will look at when they're choosing your running shoes. And that's the selling point here. Ultimately, MIMO is aimed at helping you to choose the right pair of running shoes for you. So once you've gone through the testing, which takes only a couple of minutes, really, of running barefoot, it will recommend shoes for you based on your running style. There's also a subscription package available within MIMO called MIMO Plus, which gives you access to information from expert physios and so on. Overall, a clever piece of tech which aims potentially to help you to make a better choice when you might be buying running shoes online and also to allow you to analyze your gait over time. But for me, it was a little bit hit and miss. 
The MIMO device is really cheap, which is great, very easy to set up, but I would say it's quite limited in what it measures and the fact that you have to wear it barefoot does limit its use for your normal running. I'd also say in terms of usefulness, I'm actually not sure how many times I would return to use it once I've used it for the very first time. So that's how I would sum it up. So you might be thinking that some of the gadgets and tech that we're including in this video just do the same as things like your smartwatch, your smartphone, or a heart rate monitor, but actually a lot of these do so much more than that. Take Stride, for example. So Stride is a little pod that fits on the shoelaces of your shoe, and it can give you real time information direct to your watch and then loads of data that you can analyze in the app afterwards as well. So the way that Stride works is a little bit like how cyclists would use a bike computer because it transmits your running power data direct to your watch so you can see in real time that metric. Then it also looks at various different performance indicators after your run. So things like the terrain that you're running on, the weather conditions, it takes all of those into consideration and there's also a premium option where you can pay for a subscription and get tailored training plans based on the data that you're feeding it from your current runs. So my ratings for Stride in each of the categories, well price, looking at the rest of the gadgets on test, I would say it's really reasonable. Then for ease of use, I did have that issue where I could not pair it with my phone, which made things a little tricky. Um, so I would say ease of use, three out of five. Then for the level of metrics, I would say four out of five for that. And then finally usefulness. Well, I think it is quite a useful device. It's really good to have that extra data as you would with any other sort of additional gadget that you're attaching to having your smartwatch data to. Nerve are a pair of smart insoles that aim to not only integrate with the apps and hardware that you might already have, like your watches and your smartphone, measuring things like pace, GPS, and distance traveled, but also more importantly, as smart insoles, they measure things like pronation, the type of foot contact that you make, stride length, cadence, and all of these more advanced running metrics, and then give you feedback based on what it finds. The insoles themselves measure using 32 different sensors under the sole of your foot. So you actually slip these underneath the existing insoles in your trainers. And then there's a little tab that hangs over the side, which the sensors attach to. And those sensors communicate with your phone or your watch as required. When you're out on a run, you can choose to receive feedback, either through haptic feedback, so that's essentially vibrations through the sensors themselves, or via your phone through audio cues that can help you to improve particular things that you're looking to work on. Nerve is one of the more expensive items on test, so it probably gets scored down a little bit on value for money, but actually there's a lot of technology here. So if you're gonna make an investment in something that measures quite a lot of things, which Nerve does, is relatively easy to use, although it did take a little bit of extra time on the initial setup, and potentially has long-term value to help you make adaptations over time, then this could be it. Okay, so how about a smart shoe? Yes, really. So Under Armour have a number of different shoes in their range that contain Bluetooth chips that can feed data back to you, such as the Hover Machina. So the Hover Machina gives you real-time cadence information. So it can hook up to your headphones, if you're wearing headphones on your run, and tell you what your cadence is. You can set goals for the cadence that you want to be trying to hit. And if you drop below that, then it will give you a little warning message. So you can access all of the data that you get from the Under Armour shoes within their Map My Run app. So after your run, you can go back through, have a look and see your cadence details. So my verdict on the Under Armour Hover Machina shoes, the price of them is pretty much the same or a bit less than any premium pair of running shoes at the moment. So I think price-wise, it's really reasonable. Ease of use, I found that it really easily connected to my phone, that I had no problems accessing the data that was stored in the Map My Run app. As for what it measures, well, you've got stride length, you've got pace, and you've got your cadence. So. They're a pretty basic range of metrics for you to look at. And then it comes down to usefulness. Well, actually, I'm gonna give these a slightly higher score than the range of metrics because I really found it useful as a sort of nudge on my form to get the instant feedback.
Next up, Anna and I are going to take a look at two different Garmin devices which give you similar things but in slightly different use cases. Now I've got the HRM Pro which is a chest based heart rate monitor strap. Now I've always used a heart rate monitor strap alongside my watch throughout my career because I felt that it's given me more reliable, more accurate data than the wrist based monitors do in the case of my individual wrist. This gives you heart rate and that communicates via Amp Plus and Bluetooth so you don't have to have a Garmin device, you could link that with your phone or any device that will accept those inputs and read the data. But on top of heart rate data, and the reason that this is Garmin's top of the range heart rate monitor, you could pay for cheaper ones that only give you heart rate functionality, is you get running dynamics. So that's cadence, stride length, ground contact time, vertical ratio, so that's how much you're going up and down versus how much you're moving forwards and kind of a measure of efficiency, I suppose, as well as left-right balance, which tells you how long you're spending on the ground on each side. Potentially that could point to imbalances that you know, could lead to injury. Another nice element is that you can actually wear the heart rate strap, the HRM Pro, away from your watch or your phone. So for activities like swimming or potentially football or contact sports where you can't risk wearing a watch for the fear of hurting other people. And that's a really nice touch to still be able to measure your heart rate data during those activities. It will sync directly with the Garmin Connect app as well as operating as a standalone device measuring things like all day heart rate, step count, as well as minutes and intensity of exercise during the day. So in summary, Garmin's HRM Pro is pretty expensive if you're treating it as a standalone heart rate monitor. But once you layer in all of the additional running dynamics metrics that you get as well, I think it's pretty good value for money. In terms of ease of use, it's really easy to put on and sync with your watch and your phone, so really straightforward there. And it does measure a lot of different metrics as well, so a pretty high score in that category too. And then finally, in terms of long-term usefulness, I am biased because I personally choose to wear a heart rate strap for my runs, and I particularly like this one. So again, a high score from me on that one. But now it's time to go over to Anna and take a look at the other Garmin product that I was talking about previously. The Dynamics Pod, on the other hand, may be small, but it is mighty. We'll measure the usual cadence and stride length. Not only that, it also measures ground contact time. You've got vertical oscillation. And the way that it does that is you clip it on the back of your waistband, of your shorts or your tights. Make sure it's right in the middle because then it can also record things like your left-right balance, which is really interesting to look at. Price-wise, I mean, I'm giving this a five out of five. I think it's a real bargain for the amount of stuff that you get from it. It's such a tiny little thing, but it's really reasonably priced. So ease of use, I'm gonna go with a four out of five only because I did struggle to actually find the metrics that the foot pods had got the first couple of times that I used it for my run. Then we'll go to metrics. So this little tiny device has so much information available. So I'm gonna give this one a five out of five. And then finally, usefulness, which again kind of feeds into that metric side of things. I would say that this is a really useful piece of kit. So it makes sense to follow Garmin's Dynamics Pod with the same sort of offering from Coros, which is called the Coros Running Pod, where Pod stands for Performance Optimization Device, which does a broadly similar thing, but focused on the Coros ecosystem or syncing directly with your phone. It gives you an added layer of different metrics to report on how you've been running. So that might be ground contact time, left, right balance, stride length, stride oscillation, and stride height. All sorts of new, interesting mechanics which might help you to make an improvement to the way that you run. The Coros Pod isn't particularly expensive, so a good score for value for money, and it's also incredibly easy to use, more or less foolproof, in fact. It measures pretty much the same thing as the Garmin Pod here, so a high score in that category. And then long-term usefulness, ultimately I think depends on the ecosystem that you prefer using. So I'm much more familiar, I'll admit, with the Garmin Connect ecosystem, but have tested Coros watches in the past. So if you have a Coros watch or you use the Coros app regularly, then I think this is a better investment than the Garmin device and vice versa. If you've ever watched a Premier League match, you might have noticed that the footballers wear an undershirt vest, and that is used to track all sorts of data from things like distance covered to speed and everything in between. So the Incus Nova Run Bundle does kind of the same thing on a consumer level. So within the bundle, you get the training top, which has a little pouch in the back right between your shoulder blades where you slot the Incus Nova, which is a palm-sized device that is gonna be measuring the metrics while you're out running. The device measures all kinds of different metrics, things like your cadence, your location, your pacing, left-right balance and impact. And it will also be able to take into account the elevation and terrain 
And there's even a setting where it can look at running induced fatigue. It is fully waterproof as well. It has 20 hours battery life. It has a one month memory capacity, which means that it does hold on to your workouts if you're not going to be syncing them straight away to get all of that lovely data. Now, one of the drawbacks of this particular Dynamics gadget is that of course you do have to wear the apparel for the Incus to slot in in the exact position that it needs to be between your shoulder blades. There are also plans in the future for the Incus Nova to sync with your smartwatch which would be even more impressive and even more useful in my opinion. Price wise for the amount of information that you get it's pretty good. I'm going to give it a four out of five. And that is because we then move on to the ease of use. So I'm going to knock it down because of the fact that you do have to wear the actual gear, the apparel and clothes in order to get the information from these metrics. Metrics, I'm gonna give that a four out of five. I think you get an awful lot of information that you can make a lot of use of especially when it comes to improving your running and understanding better how you're running, not just how fast or how far you're running. So I think that this piece of equipment is incredibly useful. Like I say, for understanding like your left, right balance, for example, or your running power based on the terrain and especially the running inefficiency stuff from when you get fatigued. So the Stride Sense is a pair of compression fit leggings that has five pockets to put the sensors into. So you've got one, the front on your waist, and then you've got two on each leg. So the idea behind this is that you put all of the sensors into their pockets and then when you go out and run, it can tell exactly where your legs are. So you get metrics to do with things like your pelvic rotation and your knee kickback as well. Also really worth noting that although the pods are water resistant, they are not waterproof. When charging the pods, I actually found that two of them didn't connect in with the tiny little pins. So without having those pods charged, I've then not actually been able to sync the pods to go out and run and try this out. So a lot of this review, I'm afraid, is going to be based on just what they can do and not what I've experienced them doing. So I would say that price-wise, I'm gonna put it at a three out of five because I think that there are other gadgets on this test that are easier to use for less money that still give you the same sort of metrics. That leads us on to the ease of use. And I'm gonna to have to give this a not applicable because I haven't been able to use it. I haven't been able to get the pods to charge in the docking station. Metrics wise are absolutely incredible. I would love to know what my pelvic rotation is and I would love to know what my kickback is as well. So I'm going to give that a tentative five out of five because I do think that those metrics are incredibly interesting. And then finally usefulness, again, I'm not able to actually judge on this because I've not had any of the data to work from. So I'm going to give that one another NA because I don't feel like I can actually score the Atis Stride Sense in that criteria. Time for me to choose what I would pick if I had to put my money where my mouth is. Ultimately, I've used Garmin's HRM Pro a lot. It's quite expensive for a heart rate monitor, but it's very good and it adds an extra layer of accuracy, I think, for me when I like running to heart rate. But from the test today, I really enjoyed testing nerves insoles. I thought they were really innovative. There's a lot of technology there that appeals to me and my inner geek. And in terms of long-term use and potentially making genuine changes to the way I run if I felt like I needed to make changes, then those are something that I would look at. And now time for my pick of my favorite gadgets in this test. And for me, it's still on the back of my shorts actually. It's gotta be the Garmin FootPod. I think for the price, it's really reasonable. You get some really good data that just goes that little bit further than what you get on your watch. And I love the ease of use of the fact that it syncs up to my existing Garmin products. So the Garmin FootPod for me. Make sure you let us know what you think of the gear too. Are wearable trackers like these the future? And how much do you think something like this, this technology could help you to improve your running performance? And how cool do you have to be to wear new sci-fi leggings? definitely cooler than me. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments anything that you think could help the rest of the Running Channel community as well, and we'll see you next time.